Hi, thank you very much for tuning in. Before we talk a little bit about the ingredients that you can find in the description, I'd just like to ask everybody who watches this video to give it a big thumbs up. It sends a message to YouTube that I'm doing a good job and we've got a fantastic recipe coming up. So we do have a really wide range of ingredients here that are all going to be simplified into a one pot deliciousness as you're going to see in a moment. So I've got a cup and a half of full fat yogurt. Don't use low fat yogurt for putting in curries because it just turns to water and it can split. So what I've done with this yogurt is put a little bit of water and whisked it to make it nice and uh, palatable so it won't split in the sauce. We've got four tablespoons of Maggi coconut mix powder. Let's talk a little bit about that. I buy it a kilo at a time. It's the only coconut you're ever going to need. It tastes fantastic. You can boil it um, with hot water, obviously, and make coconut cream. We've got three tomatoes, really finely chopped. Always use the ripest tomatoes you can find. Chop them up really thoroughly so they disintegrate a lot quicker. I'm using Indian onions. You can use any onions you want. Indian onions, for some reason, are really cheap at the moment. I'm getting about two and a half kilo for £1.50. But um, that's just all a matter of preference and whether you can get them or not. We've got about a third of a large cauliflower cut up into florets, put on the highest heat in the oven, so roasted cauliflower absolutely delicious we're going to be using some chaat masala i talked a little bit about that in one of my recent videos so it's basically a souring agent most curries require some type of souring agent either lime lemon tamarind and that's all it is is a sour agent used for a lot of indian snacks but it goes great in any savory dishes we've got some coarsely chopped everything from fresh no technology, no blending or anything like that. Ginger and garlic, generous amount of hot chili powder. We've got some chilies sliced. We've got some coriander, predominantly it's stalk, some cumin seed, some coriander powder and some salt. And we've got some whole garam masala. So we've got a piece of cinnamon. We've got a couple of red dried chilies. We've got a star anise some green cardamom and we've got some delicious um, fenugreek seed there and last but not least we've got one tin of chickpeas that's had um, a little bit of salt in and about a teaspoon of turmeric and I'm going to drain those chickpeas now so it's good good idea to even though you're using tinned do boil your chickpeas first or just prolong the cooking process because sometimes tinned chickpeas are like bullets so i'm going to drain those and we're going to be definitely using the stock that has a little bit of starch off the chickpeas in and like i mentioned all the ingredients are in the description of the video so let's get cooking first of all i'm using ghee obviously use sunflower oil use vegetable oil and there's about five tablespoons there that i'm heating up I'm going to add the cumin seed and I'm going to add basically our whole garam masala. So, oh, I didn't mention the cloves, asbestos fingers. We've got some uh, cloves in there as well. And we just need to heat all that up over about 90 seconds. We make sure your fenugreek seed is a reddish brown. And that's probably the last thing that's going to cook. So we start off with a really nice seasoned oil that's going to infuse the flavour of all the um, forthcoming ingredients. Smelling absolutely wonderful. So that's great. The fenugreek seed, seeds are cooked and everything's sizzling and the aromas are really great. So first of all, just saute the onions down. That's going to take between five to eight minutes. Don't rush. And I'm also going to add the salt to the onions. It helps them prolong the browning, brings out the flavour. Nice slow cooking. You want to do your onions slowly because they're the base of your sauce and you get a really lovely warm flavour from fried onions. Even children love fried onions on the hot dogs, so of course 
um, it's super tasty. So in goes the finely chopped ginger and garlic. And I'm just going to toast that off for a minute. The rule of thumb for cooking ginger and garlic, <coughs> excuse me, in Indian food is cook it until you can't smell the aroma. So it ensures that all the rawness has been cooked away. Next, I'm going to add the tomatoes. And again, they need cooking really well, just like the onions, until they disintegrate. And I'm also going to add the green chilli. There's an orange one in there as well, a little bit more fruitier. And the powdered spices, which is really simple for this dish. Chilli powder, coriander powder, and I've just got some chaat masala. Chaat comes from, it's, it's, it means to lick, so it should be really, really mouth-watering. And it's made of black salt and mango powder and various other spices. You can find it on eBay. And it's instead of using lemon juice, but it's going to be more sophisticated and complex in terms of flavour. So I'm going to give that a good stir. That's all had a really good stir. Next, like I mentioned before, I've drained the chickpeas and I've got this amazing stock filled with um, turmeric, a little bit of salt and obviously some of the starch from the chickpeas and that's starting to look really good already. So I'm just going to sweat that down until the tomatoes start to disintegrate. That's why it's really important to chop them finely. So that's all had a really good mix. And because we don't really need... Oh, the vapour's coming off with the two types of chickpeas. Oh, I love it, love it. Uh, anyway, the lid's going onto the pan. The heat's going to be turned down a little bit. We're going to come back in about five minutes. So I've just taken the lid off after five minutes. Next, I'm going to add the yogurt. And stir that in well. I added additional water as well, halfway through that five minutes. So about half a cup. So when you add yogurt, it always looks really... Um, light in colour but when you cook that yoghurt out all the spices absorb into it and it will get darker so there's the coconut cream powder that's going to be stirred in thoroughly it'll thicken the sauce up in goes the coriander that's the bottom bit of the coriander where the flavour is and the stalks for some reason in England when you buy coriander they don't sell it with the roots on the roots are <laughs> where all the flavour is. So if you're making pastes, you know, particularly like Southeast Asian style, always blend the roots. Chinese supermarkets sell the roots, cut off the stem. I suppose um, the English people buy the top bit and um, people that really know about flavour um, buy the roots. Excellent for pastes, it's where you really get true coriander flavour but it's uh, really disappointing to see that um, unless you go to a Chinese supermarket all the coriander has the roots cut off so that's a little tip for you so I'm just going to bring that back to the boil and what we can do is check it for salt at this stage I'm going to check it for salt actually when you've added the chickpeas because they were um, parboiled in salt. They're nice and soft now. And the delicious cauliflower that's been baked in the oven until it's uh, nice and brown. That's where you get all the, um, the flavour in the uh, brown parts. And uh, yeah, check for salt. Mm. That tastes really, really great. 
little bit more salt, just a pinch. And that's all the ingredients added. Let's have a change of angle. And I'm just going to boil that for about five minutes now with the lid on. We'll come back and we'll serve. It's smelling fantastic. So that's been simmering away for about five to seven minutes. And we've got some oil rising to the surface. And wow, let's just give it a stir. And it just feels so soft and well cooked. So aromatic. I'm going to be having it with um, 112 hybrid rice which is uh, the longest basmati rice in the world. Link in the description. So I'm going to serve that with a little array of garnish. So after all your hard work and prep, making your house smell amazing, that's what we get. Some juliennes of ginger, a little bit of chili. Chiffonaded coriander, if you like. <laughs> And uh, we've got some authentic home style Indian food that really packs a punch. So versatile, so much has gone into it, but it's so simplified. And as you can see, we've got another one of those. So this dish and the quantity of ingredients will serve for. So like I said in the beginning, give the video a big thumbs up. I really appreciate your support. The more support I get, the more videos I make and um, I want to make videos so please help me out. Good night.